What's up, OG fam and first-time fam? Welcome to another edition of Man to Man. I'm David Wazicki, your favorite certified transformational nutrition coach, and today we are back with another extraordinary brother. I'm really excited about this one. He's known for spreading joy and body positivity, both of which I love. Plus, he is the curator of the notoriously dapper fashion blog that has been featured in the New York Times, Glamour Magazine, and the Huffington Post. He is also the author of the NAACP Image Award nominated Notoriously Dapper, How to Be a Modern Gentleman with Manners, Style, and Body Confidence. Again, really excited to dig into this one. Please give it up for the one, the only, the Kelvin Davis. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. How are you feeling, brother? Great. How are you? Awesome. I'm good. Let me just say, because you are rooted in fashion, you do have the nominated book. Yes. Uh, you do have the amazing fashion blog. And for those that are only listening and not watching. For sure. You are, your fit is the colorway, the scheme. That's my jam. I'm, if you notice, I'm all black, yes. always, yes. all day, every day. And only my little uh, uh, accessories are in color. You got the beautiful brimmed hat with that nice black and white detailing yeah. going on. Yeah, the- The, the Pokemon the... card on the side, yeah. Oh, sh wow. <laughs> Wow. I didn't even catch that. <laughs> it's like the extra, the extra dapper. Flag. <laughs> then you got the black, t black shirt with the, with the white polka dots. I'm like, yes, all, all about this. So we're, we're off to a great start. We're, we're both in the same fashion lane. So uh, I'm excited. Yes. Uh, you know how we do here on the show. We always start with one question to get you man to man blue check certified okay and i ask every man who's yet to give me the same answer twice so no pressure at all <laughs> you ready I'm, I'm ready i'm ready i'm ready all right brother what does masculinity mean to you okay all right well i'm going to try my best to answer it you know and hopefully the answer isn't something that's already been duplicated <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> to me, masculinity is um, as a man, it is what you define of who your true character is. Right. So I feel like mm. most men get stuck in the societal standard of what masculinity is instead of really being true to who they are. And, you know, starting to believe these, you know, non sense societal standards of masculinity, but instead look within yourself and really being true to who you are and your true char character and not changing or limiting who you are to meet a standard of masculinity. To me, that's what a true, mm. that's what the true definition of masculinity is when you could be your true authentic self without trying to feed into what other people's version of masculinity is. And what I mean by that is for an example, like, I love art. I love fashion. I love like bright colors. I love, you know, a lot of things that most people would consider feminine. Right. But that right. doesn't make me less masculine because I like those kind of things. Right. And, you know, you don't have to be like, you don't have to go to the gym, have all these muscles to be masculine. All you have to do is just be who you are. Oh, I love it. Thank you. One. Yeah. You, you are certified to, it is an original. It's a Kelvin Davis original. Okay, bet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I love that. And three, you know, you, you touch upon, and I love it. I, I love the societal versus the true you, uh, uh, effectively, is what you're getting at. And especially, you know, with, with your background of, of, of looking to be a true gentleman and not fitting norms, I'll ask you this because I've heard through research of our great researcher, there's a story around a pink uh, polo shirt. Yes. A kid. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, can, can, you, can you expand on that? I sure can. Yeah. So when I was in high school, my mother went to a conference in Myrtle Beach and she went to the polo outlet store. And this was around the time where polo, I think, was one of the first companies to start making pink polos for men. And my mother knew mm -hmm. that I love like bright colors. She knew my favorite colors were pink and purple. So while she was shopping, she got this pink polo for me. 
I wore it to high school and it was like, I mean, when she brought it back to me, it was, I mean, I just remember like not only being so happy that my mom like brought me like this pink polo, but the fact that she thought my son would love this. Let me get this for him and bring it to him, you know, and just to give me that like sense of joy. And for me, I've always had parents that were very accepting of who I was. Right. So mm. that wasn't anything new to me. So when I got the polo and when I went on the bus, let me tell you, oh my God, those kids went crazy. <laughs> they were like, oh, snap, you got a pink polo on, da, 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 right? But then you're also met with like, with that same energy of excitement and people, they're like, oh my God, you look so fresh, da, da, da. And, and like, and when I mean pink, I'm not talking about like no baby pink. I'm talking about like a fuchsia, like almost like a purpley okay. pink. You know what I'm saying? Like a bright, like okay. neon kind okay. of pink, right? And it had yeah, like yeah. a and and it and it had like a, a neon green horse on it, so it was like very like Ooh, boom. I know the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I was met with this excitement of like, oh, like you're doing something that you know nobody at this high school has ever done, and then you're also met with this like nonsense, you know, version of like masculinity where people would like call me names yeah. and they would be like, are you yeah. gay because you're wearing this and this and this and that? Like they were always, you know they would say negative things to me. And I would just be like, you know, yeah. it does not matter what you wear. Like, why does that like, why does it matter if I'm in pink? Why does it matter if I'm in purple? Why does that define to you, A, what sex sexuality is, B, what I am as a man, and C, entitles you to call me out of my name? Like, you won't get these hands, because right. you, you can get these hands. Right, right. You know, hands, feet, elbows, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you get them all. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get... <laughs> <laughs> so like, so for me, it was like, you know, I had to like, I had, I had to really put, put some people in their place to be like, yo, this is not the way you're supposed to like talk to people, to people, especially when they're different than you. Yeah. And, you know, I'll be notes to me, you know, at this around, let's see, I wore that polo like beginning of school year around like probably november is was when Kanye became like Kanye. Like ah, he started wearing like the, yeah. like the pink polos, but like, like the color pop. Yeah. So then everybody at my school started rocking it. And I'm like, y'all are the same, y'all are the same What's people yeah, that was just like, just a few months ago. <laughs> but now since this dude that, you know, comes out with a slow jam song and everybody want to yeah. be like Kanye now. You, yeah. 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 But it's like, I will say, I mean, I, I don't know what Kanye was doing. Before that, but I will say I probably wore the pink polo before him. I'm just putting that out there. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> uh, all right, all right, all right. Okay. No, I love that. I, you know, th there's something interesting, you know, with that story because I, I have similar stories. I, you know, now I am mostly monochromatic, as I mentioned, all black in the summer, white and black splash of color yeah but i was all about bright pinks neon green button downs once upon a time and it was met with similar yeah. it's like oh wow to be a guy and and wear that that's so brave of you that's yeah. so big of you wow you pull that off and then you get the other thing where it's like mm, okay okay yeah you know and, and then you start getting the name call and you start getting the you know uh, uh, you know, questioning where, where your, you know, gender lies and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, just, you know, from my POV and any, anytime this, this, uh, co type topic of conversation comes up, I always say, you know, first and foremost, I think whether, however you identify, we all embody masculine, feminine energy as a man and represent, representation as a man yes you one, have more masculine one, energy oh, right 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah yeah however we have both and we are able to navigate and we should as men not be afraid of the feminine energy like For sure. there is there is strength in it there is creativity in it yeah. there is you know a lot of these things that men again have been afraid of stereotypically speaking and in terms of again what you alluded to at the top this societal norm and you know recently <laughs> there's 
I mean, there, I, I feel like right now there's all this type of resistance and back and forth in, ter in terms of, you know, you bring up masculinity and then it became toxic masculinity. And then on this show, many times we, we've talked it out about expressing and myself saying it's not, masculinity itself is not toxic. The person is toxic. For and sure. if they utilize masculine energy, just like feminine energy, that can be toxic as well Thank in you. a lot of ways. Preach it. Right? Preach it. Thank so. you. Preach it, man. <laughs> And so we now come to this point where you, we're getting the back and forth. There are people who are for the dynamic we're having right now the, and the conversation we have where we're comfortable and becoming more comfortable in the skin we're in. And there's a lot of men where it's just like, oh, my God, this is too much. That's too that's too far left. That's too liberal thinking. That's too. Exactly. And you're in yeah. South Carolina. So I I'm know. Sure oh, you, dude. Tell, whoa. Well, Yes. I'm like, <laughs> if I see another red hat, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I see you, I'm just, I'm just like, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and with that come these certain, you know, old school, outdated tropes, outdated ideas of, of, of masculinity, let alone a lot of other things, of course. Which, you know, we, we, we can talk about, uh, for another conversation, but yeah. I, I just, you know, I, I want to dig into this deeper because I do think with that also comes this, I, I feel like a lot of men have been hiding and mm. there are, how do I put this? There's this thing where as men, you know, we, we get into this suffer and silence scenario yes. more so than women. For sure. Right. Yeah. And I, I love that you talk about this being comfortable in your skin. I love that you also talk about body positivity with some, which I'm segueing into because it, this all goes hand in hand. This all for me, the, the bottom line, it just goes into this air of confidence, being confident in your skin, being comfortable in your skin, yeah. which is all self-love. Uh, at the end of the day, right? So for you, where did this begin? I mean, it, it, it effectively sounds like it started with fashion and you being comfortable yeah. to rock the pink polo <laughs> uh, or, or you know, the, the, a, a Cameron-like all pink outfit. So, uh, so it's like, did it start there for you? Like, where, where did you start saying, okay, you know, to, to get to the point of 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 um spreading body positivity yeah bos, pot, bo, ooh, uh, tongue tied yeah <laughs> body positivity yeah. as a model uh -huh. male model um where did all of this began begin for you well you know i was like i said like i was very fortunate to have parents that were very hands-on with me and very you know much like you are who you are we love you for who you are be confident about who you are and you know i never felt insecure or you know i never felt shamed when i was with my family right but it was like all of the outside sources like the societal sources like when i would go shopping i wouldn't see people on the like walls or in the magazines that looked like me you know and i realized this as like a 10 year old 12 year old boy like there's no mm -hmm. dark skin models. Yeah. And I remember when I saw Tyson Beckford for the first time, I was like, he's dark skin like me. Like he's dark skin like mommy. He's dark skin like my uncles. Like this is crazy. Yeah. Like, it, it was like my first time seeing that. Right. So I say, I say that to say like throughout really um, like adolescence and school, you know, I didn't really have much of a insecurity per se about, about my, about my body that didn't really start until like a little bit into college and a little bit after I graduated. So when I graduated from college, I got my first art te teaching job and I went to go get some newer clothes to go look fresh. Cause you know, I love looking dapper. And I was like, you know, I got to change, change. I got to change it up. I got to look more professional, but I still want to look like cool. Right. So I went to go get some, yeah. some, some clo clothes and, um, uh, I asked for this red blazer that I saw in a store, which is called Express Men. And, you know, Express has like very, very, you know, slim fitting clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't really yeah. fit, you know, 
let alone like a black body, but like a normal size body, like in gen- general, right? So I go in there and I ask for like a 48 regular and the lady's like, uh, I don't think we have that size. Like this is only a four to 42. I was like, I can't fit into a 42. Is there anybody like you can look online, maybe see if you have like at a, yeah. at a, another store. And she was like, uh, I can check. And then she like looked and was like, no, we don't have it at any other store. I was like, do you, get, do, do you carry it online? And she seemed like frustrated that I kept asking for another size. Huh. And she looked me dead in my face and she said, maybe you're too big to shop here. Maybe you should just go to like a Damn. big and tall store. Like maybe, you know, maybe that's more of your speed. Like, you know, like I don't wow. like, I just don't think we have wow. anything in here that could fit you. I was like, and she said this like loudly, right? So everybody in the store can hear me. I mean, can hear her. Everybody's looking at me. And it was my first time as a guy, as an adult, especially being like publicly body shamed, right? Embarrassing. I was humiliated. I was like, I did not know what to do with this emotion. And the fact that she was a girl, you know, like I can't, you know, especially with me being a black man, I can't just spaz on this white woman that just like said I was too, you know what I mean? So I have to like, I I have to move very carefully. Right. So I just like took it, swallowed it. And I couldn't shake the feeling of really being insecure and wanting to change how I looked. I really wanted to change how I looked. Like I was like, well, maybe, you know. Maybe I should stop eating this. Maybe I should lose weight. Maybe I should do this. And I was like thinking to myself, you know, and I kept doing these things and, you know, my body would change a little bit, but I would still feel insecure. And I was like, there's got to be a way for me to feel better about myself. I can't be the only guy that feels this way about their body. Right. So I was like, I've always wanted to start like a fashion blog. Why not like, why not start a fashion blog with the underlying message be about body positivity for men. And this was like in 2012, like way, like way, mm. way prior to where wow. body positivity was like the mainstream thing. Like I, you, right. Right. You, you, you know what I mean? So I was like really taking a chance doing this thing. And, you know, obviously I got like a lot of backlash from like that toxic masculinity. I had dudes like messaging me, like, why don't you just take, hydroxy cut and do this like i had guys like sending me like a workout regimen i'm like dude i work out just like my body is built different i don't know what to tell you like i'm built like a miniature linebacker i just don't know what to tell you like i'm like i don't want to tell you like i'm just naturally built like this like i can't move anything else right so you know and it was i felt like a duty to make other men aware that it's okay for you to feel insecure it's okay for you to have these feelings. It doesn't make you less of a man to feel insecure mm. about how you look, mm. right? But yeah. it makes you less of a man if you take your insecurities about how you look and take it and turn it into negativity on yourself and, and to other people, right? That part. Yeah. So, like, yeah. you really have to, like, zone in on yourself and be like, you know, you know, just because you're having a bad day doesn't mean you need to go out and mess up anybody else's, right? So that's the way like I live. And I was like, you know, I have to deal with these feelings. And there's one thing I always knew, no matter how big I got, no matter like how short I was, no matter how bald I got, I knew no matter what, whatever room I walked in, I would always be the best dressed dude in that room. Always, huh. always, yeah. because <laughs> I always like there is like if if I couldn't find something that fit, fit me, I would get it oversized and I would just get it tailored to like fit me like in my like waist and shoulders shoulders, but I was still flat. I'm like, y'all cannot stop style. You know what I'm saying? Like fashion there is like go. size consistent. Yes. But style is really just style is you like that's your character. That's right. Yeah, that's right. No, I love that. I love that. And I love that you built this platform. You know, usually things like this come out of a personal experience, right? Yeah. And, you know, one, it's, it's beautiful. You created this platform Two, It's only now that, you know, again, it's it, to your point. Now it's becoming mainstream 10, 11 years ago when you created this thing, that was far from the norm. But again, the reason you gained popularity is because there were a lot of men hiding. There were a lot of men suffering in silence. And there were a lot of men that were afraid to go against the societal norm and that societal norm still remains today. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, I, 
you know, would have loved to have come across your blog um, <laughs> at, 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 a, at a point in time, because, you know, I, you know, I've, I've gone through the gamut. I mean, part of my wellness journey is, you know, it, it taps into body image. And, you know, I, one of the reasons why I was excited to have you on here um, is because for myself, I feel like from time to time, even today, as much as I think I got it all figured out and under control and certified this and, you know, hosting a wellness podcast that I still have like these, you know, I don't, I don't want to label that I have body dysmorphia, but yeah. I have moments where I'm like, damn, I've been going, getting after it in the gym. And one day yeah, I feel like Superman in the mirror. The next day I'm like, wait, who am Wait, I? Yeah. Hold, hold up. Yeah, hold yeah, up. yeah. yeah I, I woke up. How did this happen? <laughs> Wait, I just, just yesterday I was super superhero on, on the beach, and now I'm like, Ugh, you know. So, yeah. you know, you you have these things that still sit in the back of your mind, and you know, which are traumatic. I, I think, you know, uh, I always like to say, you know, your trauma is always different from some every everyone's trauma is unique. So sure. what you may brush off your your shoulder may be so traumatic that somebody doesn't want to get out of bed the next day oh, where wow. again body positivity yeah. you know to this point it's like oh my god well i don't have the confidence kelvin has i don't have the style flex like kelvin has many don't apparently but <laughs> it, it's like how do i <laughs> it's like how <laughs> how do i then you know in comparing myself, then it's like, how, how do I get out of bed? How do I get that confidence? What do I do? Yeah. And, you know, it, it does begin with, you know, something like this. And I, I again, there, there's a stat, again, this, uh, our amazing uh, researcher slash intern pulled together, like almost, uh, it's 48% of men, mm. age 16 to 14, 16 to 40, have struggled with how they feel about their bodies. That's, damn near half like yeah. i just want to call it half at this point. it is half like yeah. pretty much you know what right. i mean there's just yeah. that other two percent that's just indifferent or doesn't want to admit to it but it's probably more <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah, right yeah. it's only the men who actually admit it exactly so so we're all going through it men or women yes women totally have different societal pressures that they have to get into. And I, I am not going to be one to speak on that, of but course. I know it is magnified. Right. Yeah, yeah. But as humans, as you know, we all have these things and we go on social media, we do the scroll and sometimes it becomes a doom scroll because you're doing the grass is greener yes. when you scroll or when you watch TV or when you see, you know, this person or when you see a movie like Creed and you see how oh, Jonathan Majors and literally, I'm like, literally, I'm like, every time I see him, I'm like, <laughs> how is this dude from Texas and eats like, cause you, he'll like talk about what he eats and he eats like potatoes, like country. I'm like, how are you eating all this and still look like a, a black Greek God? Like you, this is crazy. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. But you know, they, what, what they're not saying is yes, this is like part of the job. So yeah. they're working out like two, three times a day. Yes. They're eating like horses. They can, because they're working out two, three times a day. That's true. And that's their job. So yeah. if I, you know, if I get to work out twice a day and then I can sleep and eat like an animal, <laughs> sign me up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Man, <laughs> I love yeah. food. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And I love to work out. Okay, cool. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's like you don't get to see that when you see the pictures. You don't get to see that when you see the movie. And then to your point, you know, you get lost in like, damn, black Greek God here. And it's like, damn, am I like, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And, yeah. and you start getting into this, you know, comparison game. And so all of that to say is coming back to body positivity on a daily basis like what are you what is your approach or what has yeah. been your approach in terms of gaining that confidence because i think that's so big mm -hmm. for men because men don't want to admit they have lack of confidence men don't want to admit they're not as strong and as yeah. as you know durable as they're supposed to be you know walking out especially black men yeah yeah it's of like, course well, you add that extra layer or two because now we're supposed to be extra invincible and extra tough and extra exactly to take in all all of these things so yeah. on yeah so what do you so in this journey and and through this journey i should say what skills what 
tactics, yeah. <laughs> what what thought processes ha- have you gone through to continue to gain this momentum in, in terms of confidence and body positivity? Yeah, uh, I would have to say it honestly goes to me. Um, it's the act of appreciating what your body can do for you rather than what your body looks like. Right. And understanding that you can find confidence in talents and skills that you have and build off of that confidence into body confidence. So when people ask me, you know, like, how do you like, you know, how would you recommend somebody to get more body confident? And I tell them the same thing. I'm like, if you are really confident in your ability to braid hair, right. You need to take that confidence that you have in being able to braid someone's hair. And you need to understand that that wouldn't be capable if your body and your mind wasn't doing that for you. So appreciating what your body is able to do for you. The fact that you're able to develop a skill and almost do it involuntarily without even thinking about it. Right. I even tell people like, even when we drive, there's so many days where people drive the same route every day. You like literally forget that you're paying attention that like, you're not like, you're like in, there's moments where I've driven. I'm like, how many red lights did I just stop at? Like you, you almost like, it gets almost like involuntarily. Like, you know, it's red, you stop. Like there's no thinking. There's no like, you know, it's go, go, go. And it's like involuntary. And right. I tell people, you know, if you develop a skill, if you have a talent, if you have a skill or anything about that your body does for you that you're really proud of, that is almost so regular every day, it's involuntarily, it's, that is where your confidence should be. Like, that's where your confidence Mm -hmm. should build off of, you know, and maybe, you know, there's somebody that's listening to, to this, that's really good at art. They're really good at, um, you know, styling, they're really good at makeup, they're really good at, you know, architecture, anything, right? Take that confidence and understand that you can build off of that confidence into body confidence to be secure about about your body. And I don't want people to get it twisted because body, a body positivity and body confidence isn't about being body positive every day. Because I'm going to be honest with you. There's plenty of days where I wake up and I'm like, I don't feel like, I feel like shit. I look like shit. I mean, wait, am I allowed to curse on this podcast? You are. Go okay, 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 we're, we're okay, okay. open, open, honest, and vulnerable. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I feel like shit. Like, I look like shit. You, yeah. you know what I mean? But it's like, maybe, you know, I'll like, go into my closet and I'll find, you know, like a red, like a red shirt that I haven't worn in a while. I'll throw, throw it on and it makes me feel better. Or like maybe, you know, you just need like a little comfort food. Maybe you need to go on a walk. Maybe you need to do something to just help elevate your mood just a little bit. Understand and don't beat yourself up that you don't feel body confident every day. Because nobody, I'm sure Jonathan Major has a couple of days where he doesn't feel great. Shit. You right. know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel like, I really feel like if, I feel like if he were to come out and say, you know, there's days where I don't feel great. People, people would be like, well, damn. If he doesn't feel great, then, you know, it's okay for me not to feel great on certain days, right? But we have this false narrative that people that look like that or look like Michael B. Jordan have this supreme level of confidence and they're never, like, torn down. They never have bad days. They have all this money. But it's like none of that truly buys happiness. And none of that truly buys your Security. I mean, I've known people that were like pretty ripped, like bodybuilding looking dudes, CrossFit kind of guys that were very insecure. Yeah. yeah and it yeah. showed Maybe more sec- insecure. Yeah. 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 And, 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 yeah. and it showed. I'm like, the reason why you treat people this way is because you're insecure about really who you truly are. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Right. So it's like none of that is going to change like how you feel about yourself. So you have to really zone in and focus on your skills, your talents, and things that truly make you happy. And once you do that, you will be able to see how your body confidence just just, just weaves its way into your life. It's almost just like it just becomes one with everything else. Yeah, yeah. That you, you said it. Yeah, I'm, I'm such a fan of that uh, way of thinking because that's been, that's, Re- akin to my recent 
kind of reprogramming my approach and why I go to the gym. Yeah. You know, uh, a, a lot of us go, yeah, for the look, right? The aesthetic. But we we all miss, I won't say we all, but a lot of us miss all of the positive effects, all of the positive side effects that come out of getting into that gym and moving the body. For of course. Mind, mental um, digestion, being able to move, being able to think more, the blood flows better, digestion gets better, metabolism gets better, your your state of being. If I'm not in the gym in the morning, yeah. which unfortunately I wasn't this morning, you, you start feeling a different, like I feel like a different type of person than if I'm anchored in something like that, that by the time I'm out of the gym, I did something hard. I I broke a sweat. I feel good. I feel accomplished. And therein lies that start of the confidence. And it changes. And then the byproduct is, yes, you'll feel healthier. You'll look healthier. Yeah. And it, and to your point where it becomes one, like this starts to become part of that being that is David or that being that is Kelvin. And it, it just, it, 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 it eventually you want to get it to the point where it's automatic. Like I know I go into gym. A, I come out and I feel this way. Exactly. So I got to keep doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Um, love that. Love, love that you brought that up. Yeah. Since we're at this part um, of wellness, if it feels like we're 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 talking about um, uh, like wellness routine, I'd love to get into yours. Just um, and you started to touch upon it. What you know, a day in the life of wellness looks like for you, whether it's mind, body, and or soul. Yeah. What are the things that you dig into on a daily that is your anchor? Yeah. So it's changed uh, since 2021, really. So um, mm. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a type two diabetic and no. I got nine and I got diagnosed with, so I got diagnosed with type two diabetes in, uh, like, right, it was right at the end of 2020, and then I got divorced in the beginning of 2021, right? So, oh my God. Yeah. So, I had like wow. what people seem like on Instagram, this perfect life, right? Da, 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 right. So, for me, it was like I not only showed my highlights, but it was like I, I have to use this opportunity to show that I'm human, to show that yeah. no matter you know, somebody might be looking at me and being like, oh, Kevin has this perfect life. So I had to share that, you know, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. I was struggling with that. I was struggling with the fact that, you know, I was, you know, going through this um, separation with my ex-wife and, you know, my daughters, you know, I was like really, you know, hell bent about that. And then on top of, you know, mourning your own health, right? Because at this point, yeah. I've had, you know, I know I've, I've obviously had family members that have died from complications of type type two diabetes, and you know, being un being uneducated about it, you don't know much about it other than what your doctor tells you, and your doctor just wants to put you on meds, right? So they just give me like a bunch of meds, all all this stuff, and you know, I decided to take my wellness and my health into my own hands. And when mm -hmm. it's funny, and I want to say this too, so whoever's listening. Who what like you know? Because hopefully a lot of men of color are listening to this, and I want them to understand they need to go to the doctor and get checkups. Because I would have never known that I had an A one C of twelve point seven, and I had diabetes unless I had a checkup. Because I felt fine. I wasn't fre sure. frequently urinating. I wasn't overly thirsty. I did didn't have any of the side effects that normal people have for like diabetes. Diabetes. So when I got diagnosed with it, it was like shocking. I was like, what are you talking huh. about? Like, I work out, I eat pretty good. Like, what do you mean I have type 2 diabetes? My A1C is 12. Like, what is that? So having all this explained to me and then taking it upon myself, I, I went to um, a diabetes education class. And it was okay. about a and it was about a four to five hour long class. And the whole class was about learning about how to eat and uh, have a diet that is constructive to not raising your glucose levels, right? So I'm like taking in all this info and writing stuff down. I'm like thinking about things. And for three months, and now obviously I do this like every day, but I like changed my whole way of like eating 
and everything. Mm -hmm. So for me, I never really have like been like more of, I've never really been like a hungry morning person anyways. I usually eat like around like 11 or 12. So I would, so apparently that's called like intermittent fasting, but I didn't even know that yep. was like a thing. So I like, <laughs> so I, so I like was already doing that like previously, like in my head, like just naturally. So instead of me eating like shit after intermittent fasting, I would eat healthy food, right? So for three months, I would do that and I would cut out certain carbs. I will obviously wouldn't have a lot of sugar because it would elevate my, my blood, my blood sugar levels. And I was able yep. to drop my, my A1C from 12.7 to 5.6 in three months. Amazing. Yes. Love it. No meds. Yes. I literally nope. was, I was on meds for three weeks and it was horrible. I was throwing up. I had headaches. Uh, I didn't have, uh, like, I couldn't sleep. I mean, it, 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 it had really bad side effects on my body, like really bad. Yeah, I right. It. So I was like, I have to find a way to get control of who I am. So now obviously like when I go grocery shopping now, I look at labels. I try not to get things that have added sugar in them. Um, you know, and I try to get like a pretty fresh, like food diet. Right. And for me, mm -hmm. wellness daily for me is getting up, obviously putting my feet to the ground, like thanking, you know, thanking God, thanking the universe that I woke up, everybody. Like I see my dog, my Pablo, he's in the room right now yeah. asleep, but he's a shit too, you know? Yeah. So I get up, I use the restroom, grab some coffee. I have 56 plants. I don't know if you guys can see them, but there's like a bunch of plants over 56. here. And there's like, you know, we well now it's 60 because I got, I got four extra ones, but like I have plants all over, right? So I get up and I'll like, you know, water my plants. Some of them need to be watered like, um, like every week and some need to be watered every two weeks. So I'll like spritz them, water them, care for them, do whatever. I'll open up my blinds, let the sun come in have some coffee, usually watch like, you know, first take, you know, and then yeah, yeah. after that, I'll like, uh, I'll meditate on my Oculus for about 30 minutes. I have like a little meditation app on my oh, Oculus yeah. thing. Yeah. When like, it puts you in like a different world. So like you can go to like Saturn or whatever. And it's like this peaceful, like place. Right. Wow. And then I just wow. like, yeah. I'm there, I meditate. And then once I'm done, you know, I'll shower. I'll like, you know, walk my dog and, you know, I'll get my day, I'll get my day started, whether that's, you know, creating content for a brand, if I have to like pack to get ready to go on a trip to go do a photo shoot, or there's some days where, you know, I'm reluctantly free. So I'll just like go on a bike ride or I'll go like do things that are for my mental and physical health, right. To like keep yeah, things yeah. active for me. So every day I have something to do. I'm not just sitting here twiddling my thumbs and like swirling in my head about how, you know, I could have did things different in my marriage, how I wish this wouldn't have happened mm -hmm. or how I wish this would have mm -hmm. happened or I wish I looked like this or I wish I had this amount of money. You know what I mean? Like you have to Absolutely. just be thankful for what you have and keep your mind and body occupied so you don't spiral out of control. I love it. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, your 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 routine i mean for the most part it, it's 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 being present that's, sure. that's the goal like presence and movement and that is the thing because you sound grateful for the things you have whether it's the 56 plants yeah or <laughs> or pablo or again grateful for another day that you put your feet on the ground and you've been given another day to live this beautiful life. Of course. A lot of what you're mentioning is this, is, again, is staying present and being in gratitude. And I love that um, just to, you know, summarize because yes, that works for Kelvin. It doesn't have to work for everybody else. But I think the key takeaways from that, it, from somebody listening and watching and wanting to say, okay, what can I do? Yeah. If you can find your 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 anchors that allow you to be present that allow you um to be grateful in gratitude and effectively taking each day <laughs> as it comes and not being overwhelmed by yeah. you know 
um, the, the big picture sometimes that we all do. And like you said, fall into this rut of going back on shoulda, woulda, could have, uh, <laughs> and a phrase I like to do shooting on yourself where you just keep going back yeah, of course, over, yeah. and over again and you just put yourself deeper and deeper into a hole. So yeah. I, I love the approach. I also, you brought up some things at the end of this conversation that we're going to have a part two about because yeah. the coach in me, what like really woke up and said, okay, I want to do a deep dive into this because I, 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 you know, again, the, these are not just things to speak on and just kind of, you know, uh, 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 let it go on by, but your, your journey now with, with type two diabetes and seems effectively, you know, by you taking it in your own hands, it, it'll be a thing of a past because it is something that is in our hands and, and, and reversible and curable. Yes, it is. And then, and then with divorce, we, man, we're going to do a part two. We are going to do a part two. We'll call it I got type two diabetic gets divorced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm, be, because these things are important. Yeah. These two things are so important. These two things are not talked about with men in particular. The divorce thing isn't talked about in general, yeah. but it's surely not talk about among men. For sure. So we're going to talk about it next time. Yeah, of and, course. Uh, as, as it comes to your your journey with, with, with taking charge of your health, there have been a number of men uh, that have done so, that have talked about this and shared this with me. And I'm so grateful that they have. I'm so grateful that you have. And yeah. I really want to tap into it because I feel like those are the things, you know, everything you shared so far, obviously, but to be able to share your journey in real time, I think is so powerful. And the fact that you're open and willing to do it and be vulnerable. Yeah. I'm a fan. Um, and if you're open to it, yeah, we're going to do <laughs> diabetes and, and divorce with, with Colin <laughs> Davis part uh, as part two. Yeah, part two. <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. We're going to put it in the book. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, clearly I can keep going. Um, are there any projects that you have coming out or that you want to let people know about? Yeah. So um, I am currently brainstorming the um, the next notion for my next book. So um, mm -hmm. it's I'm thinking about calling it uh, the strength of being strong. And basically what that entails is about how it's more important to be mentally strong than it is phys physically strong and how you overcome mental challenges to be better and more successful in life and how people's, mm. you know, society focuses on, you know, getting your body ready for the new year, how much weight you can lift, all that stuff, but they never talk about the mind. They never talk mm. about your mental and how the mind is such a fragile muscle that like, your mind can literally make you believe and see and do things that your body would never be capable of doing. Now you're talking my language. You know what yes. I mean? Like the yes. fact that like anger yes. can put us in a place where we could do things that we never fathom our body could do or like sadness or anything like emotions that like take over us mentally that literally force our body to involuntarily do things that we never would do is a problem. You know what I mean? And I don't even want to get into my school shooting, all this kind of, kind of crazy stuff, but it's like, we have to focus on mental health. Like America is a really like, is that a mental health crisis at the moment? Like across the board, when it comes to people of color, when it comes to like every, like, you know, trans gays, like everybody is like, we're like in a mental health episode. Nobody feels safe. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> which is why I, you know, that, that, that's why I decided to get certified and, and, and approach and focus and specialize on mental health yeah. and have this type of uh, show to be able to speak more on it. And obviously we're going to be doing more of that. You and I, so yeah. um, folks in the meantime, like, Please uh, follow Kelvin Davis on Instagram. Let let's keep up to date on on this book and this book drop. Keep an eye out on when me and Kelvin get back together for part two. Yes. Uh, Diabetes and, and divorce. And the, there you go. Diabetes yeah. and divorce. <laughs> Coming at you soon. Uh, 
Kel- Kelvin, thanks so much. Uh, this has been amazing. And like I said, I already look forward to part two. Um, and in the meantime, family, don't forget to tell another brother, king or queen about man to man so we can keep the wellness revolution going. And if you're liking what you're hearing with me and Kelvin and all the other content that we've been putting out, give us those five stars, leave a dope review. Uh, and if there's someone you want to hear on man to man, connect with me on Instagram at Waziki, W A S I C K I. Until next week, fam, peace, love, and body positivity. Yes. We out. See ya. <laughs>